I certainly cannot speak for other film schools or everyone in film school, but I know a good amount of students would rather be directing personal stories like Moonlight versus, you know, Suicide Squad or something like that. This is why it was extremely alarming to me that most film schools have not taught us about the LA Rebellion. I mean, this is one of the most important founding movements of independent cinema in America, especially for filmmakers of color, specifically black filmmakers. Several years after the Watts Uprising of 1965, a few progressive professors at the University of California, Los Angeles, started an experimental program to teach Latino, Asian American, Native American, and Black students how to make films. To say the least, the ethno-communications program, as it was called, led to some unexpected outcomes, like the one you see here. This is the opening scene of Bush Mama, the thesis film of my filmmaking mentor, Haile Garima. It's one of the few moments that wasn't scripted. That's him on the left there, his film shoot interrupted by the LAPD, suspicious of a black man with a camera. Though it only lasted a few years, and though few people know about it today, the ethno-communications program led to an important movement this was the beginning of what we now call the LA Rebellion, the first ongoing effort by a collective of black film artists in the United States to create a form of cinema attentive to the lives and concerns of their own communities. Now, before I get into why this movement is relevant and why you as an independent filmmaker or film lover should also care, I should probably briefly describe the political climate in which these filmmakers were creating it in the first place. Tiff has a great description of this whole entire movement, and I'll be pulling directly from it for this section, so if you want to read the whole article, link in my description. The late 60s was a time of enormous political and social upheaval in the United States. With the assassinations of Malcolm X in 1965 and Martin Luther King and Robert Kennedy in 1968, this further escalated tensions between classes, generations, and races. As it is so often, California became both a vanguard and flashpoint for this political ferment. The 1965 Watts Uprising in Los Angeles was followed in 1966 by the founding of the Black Panther Party in Oakland. Shortly thereafter, Angela Davis rose to prominence at UCLA as a radical professor, outspoken activist, and nemesis of then-California Governor Ronald Reagan. Two years after the Watts Uprising, a landmark commemoration in August 1967 brought a surge of Black music, poetry, and visual art to the South Los Angeles area, providing an important context for the cinematic renaissance that would soon begin at UCLA with the arrival of LA Rebellion godfathers, Charles Burnett in 1967, and Haile Grima a year later. The Criterion Collection has also done a beautiful write about Charles Burnett, and I don't think I could do a better job summarizing, so for those of you who don't know who he is, Charles Burnett has been long recognized by historians as one of the greatest American film directors of all time, and he's won numerous important awards, including an honorary Oscar in 2017. Nevertheless, he's still relevantly unknown beyond the world of committed cinephiles. This isn't because he's obscure or avant-garde. It's more likely because he's always worked outside the commercial mainstream and never trafficked in the sex and violence that appeal to your average Hollywood producer. Burnett's entire independent film career has been dedicated to showing that Black Lives Matter and Against the Odds has resulted in outstanding feature-length work for cinema and TV, among them Killer of Sheep, made in 1977, made with only $10,000, and is arguably the greatest student film ever made and the foundation of a school of black neorealism that persists today. And a lot of the students who attended UCLA were, I mean, and they lived there, you know, and, uh, and, and uh, they were, in a way, uh, interested in politics and, in, and doing films about the working class. And, uh, and uh, they made these films that sort of romanticized the working class and sort of reduced it to uh, I mean, there are problems and issues to s sort of simplistic uh, terms, but in real life, at least in the life where I came from, it was totally different. And so I was reacting to those films as well as to the films Hollywood were, 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 was making at the time. And uh, so I wanted to do a film that um, uh, didn't reflect my values, but reflected in a way what was going on in the community without me imposing on it. Should I got something for him? No, man. I got something for him. Oh, no, man. 
Haile Grima remains one of the most influential filmmakers to come out of the LA Rebellion. His thesis film, Bush Mama, made in 1975, remains a watershed work, blending cinema verite realism with avant garde popism. In an August 2016 conversation at the International House of Philadelphia, Dr. John L. Jackson Jr. spoke to Grima about his career and advice he gives to young black filmmakers. Film school doesn't make a film people filmmakers. There's a whole mythology now. Uh, UCLA goes around thinking they created us, the so-called black rebellion, rebel, whatever they call it. And I'm, it's very tragic because it's in spite of UCLA we were born. And uh, to me, the historical engine that gave birth of us is something unique that needs to be flushed out without being opportunistic about uh, uh, the way uh, white America cherry picks and, and creates abortion in the creative process. See, a black film movement like literature, like music, once the white power structure cherry picks, then it destroys the resistance nature of that creative process. Now, once again, I can't speak for everyone's film school experience, but specifically with my experience, when taught about American film history, most schools teach us that this is the golden age where the Hollywood studio system started disintegrating through the 60s, and you had these like young and ambitious filmmakers like Coppola and Spielberg, etc., and they fostered this new generation of cinema. However, what schools don't talk about is around the same time, many people forget to mention the monumental work by black filmmakers like Charles Burnett, Haile Grima, and later arriving filmmakers like Billy Woodbury and Julie Dash. We're taught about the French New Wave, but not about the movement happening within America that changed people of color's perception of cinema in America forever. Now, with all that said, why should you care? Why is this relevant right now? Where should you begin to watch some of these films? These are great questions. Yes, I'm aware I don't have the largest platform in the world, but I felt like this needed to be said regardless of my platform size. Most of my audience consists of movie lovers, and some of you may even want to become filmmakers yourself. We owe a great deal to these filmmakers who are part of the LA Rebellion because they were making some of the first diverse American independent films, and they were just not talked about. Like Some of these films were not even restored and are maybe even lost forever. Yes, I know there are exceptions, etc. I'm open to learning as well if you disagree. Once again, this is all basically self-taught because I was not taught this in school. How are we supposed to be a generation of artists that strives to make work that breaks boundaries and tells our truths when we are not taking the time to study the history of the great artists who have broken and eliminated some of those previous boundaries for us? So many people I know want to make movies because they want to make the world a bit better. So many people I know want to make films because they want to encourage people to think and share human stories for people who may not understand their perspective or people who need the representation. That's absolutely beautiful and so incredibly powerful. This group of filmmakers was united through that same want. They want to change and every damn day they fought to be seen on a human level. That is exactly what we are all protesting and fighting for. No justice, no peace. And as filmmakers, we have a duty to be elevating the voices that matter the most right now and trying to educate and stand with our black peers. That is the foundation of independent cinema and the spirit behind it. My best friend Shade started a Twitter thread for black filmmakers, which will be linked in the bio. Other resources on how to help the Black Lives Matter movement will also be linked in my bio. And I've also done a lot of talking and not much showing, so here are some clips from filmmakers a part of the LA Rebellion and their most famous films along with where you can watch them. I'm trying to learn as much as I can, so if I've said anything wrong, please let me know in the comments. I'm open to learning once again. Thank you so much, guys, and I'll see you guys next week. You think Soldier will ever act his age and stay out of trouble? He wrote me a letter. He said when he got out of jail this time, he said he ain't going back. He even asked me to look for him a job. Fritish, you know Soldier may get into trouble, but he's never done anything that was evil or vicious. I mean, he's never sold dope. He's nothing like these kids walking the streets today. 
Is that little boy your boyfriend? Which one? You know the one I'm talking about, that little fat chubby one. Oh, he is. It's okay if you don't want me in your business. One of these days you're going to want my advice. Because a man ain't something you just grow up to know about. He said, I don't. I don't need a dollar. I said, if Harry sets foot in this house one more time, then I'm taking Sonny and leaving. And just as I said that, who do you think is coming up the steps? Harry.